Urethral strictures are a difficult problem to treat. Urethral strictures are a scar in the urinary channel, uh, the urethra, which runs from the bladder neck or the prostate out to the tip of the penis and carries urine out from the bladder. It occurs primarily in men and it may occur in as high as 1 in 200 or 1 in 300 men during the course of a lifetime. The causes of urethral stricture disease are also varied. They can be caused by a history of trauma, such as a blow to the perineum from falling on a fence or during a pelvic fracture, or they can be caused by infection, prior surgery on the urinary channel, bladder, or prostate, radiation injury from treatment of prostate cancer, a history of hypospadias as a child, uh, repaired, with stricture forming as an adult, or in many cases the stricture can't be identified as far as the cause. There's a variety of symptoms that are caused by urethral strictures, primarily slow flow and urinary tract infection, but urethral strictures can cause a variety of problems and complaints. Patients with stricture disease often have problems like urinary tract infection, slow urinary flow, and uh, painful urination or ejaculation. In rare cases, if urethral strictures are left untreated, patients can even develop problems like renal failure or loss of bladder contraction. The way we diagnose urethral strictures is a couple different ways. Slow urinary flow uh, can suggest a urethral stricture and a urologist can perform a scope procedure where a small scope is inserted via the penis and the stricture is identified along the course of the urethra. Another way of identifying uh, the stricture is with x-rays of the urethra. These are called a retrograde urethrogram or avoiding cystourethrogram. These can show the extent of the stricture and the exact location along the course of the urethra. Here's an example of a retrograde urethrogram, which is an x-ray of the urethra. You can see the urethra and the penis with contrast dye showing the area of stricture right before the prostate leading up into the bladder. Sometimes we also performed a urethral ultrasound. This can show exactly the length of the urethral stricture. We typically do this right before the operation after a patient's been put to sleep. The reason for this is that the urethral ultrasound involves filling of the urethra with uh, water to distend the urethra and show the extent of the stricture. This is painful for the patient and not something we typically do while the patient's awake. The reason for the ultrasound is to confirm the location and the length of the strictured segment. It also allows us to plan for what type of operation to perform. How do we treat urethral strictures? There's a couple different ways. Very commonly men are treated first with an internal cutting procedure via a scope. This is done mostly under anesthesia and a very small knife comes out of a scope that's placed in the penis uh, down to the level of the stricture and the stricture is very precisely cut uh, in several areas concentrically around the lumen of the stricture. This opens up the scarring uh, to the more normal caliber or diameter of the urethra. Usually a catheter is placed for several days up to a week after this type of procedure. Unfortunately, we now realize that this internal cutting or direct vision internal urethrotomy, the medical term uh, for the surgery, is rarely successful. And in only about 10% of cases is there a long-term success. Most patients are treated this way initially due to the relatively non-invasive nature of this type of surgery. When a direct vision internal urethrotomy fails and strictures recur, which is a vast majority of cases, patients usually undergo surgery. Surgery for urethral strictures is more invasive 
It involves an overnight stay and incision over the area of stricture. There's a variety of ways of fixing strictures depending on the nature, the cause, uh, where the stricture is located, and how long the stricture is. The most uh, simple surgery is to cut out the scarring and reconnect the healthy urethra uh, ends, the end up towards the bladder and the end out towards the penis. Uh, usually this is uh, most suitable for strictures that measure about a quarter to half an inch uh, in size. If the stricture is too long, taking out the scarred segment can lead to bowing of the penis during erection, and this needs to be avoided. When strictures are longer, a very common technique that we utilize is using a strip of the inner cheek. This is called buccal mucosa. If you think about the inner cheek, it's very similar to the lining of the urethra. It's used to a moist environment. It fights infection and it's very robust tissue. Another advantage is that the inner cheek heals very readily on its own. Within a couple weeks, a new lining has formed on the inner cheek. Patients that undergo this surgery typically have to avoid hard food for about a week or so uh, after the surgery and rinse with an antiseptic mouthwash, and that's it. This can address strictures that extend an inch or two uh, in length uh, very effectively. There are multiple other techniques that we use for stricture surgery. Uh, but these are the two that are most commonly used. Our outcomes at University of Utah with urethroplasty or surgery for stricture disease are excellent. We perform greater than 50 urethroplasties per year, which is comparable to large centers across the country. Likewise, our outcomes are very similar. In greater than 85% of cases, we have good return to urinary flow. Obviously, a lot depends on the type of stricture and the cause of the stricture disease. Patients that have radiation or other circumstances can, uh, like radiation can decrease the success of stricture surgery. However, the majority of cases, this is a very successful surgery and patients have good outcomes. Stricture surgery is not perfect, but the success rates are uh, very much better than internal cutting or dilation of the strictures. When we excise a stricture, I typically give patients about an 85% probability that they won't have additional difficulties with strictures in the future. This is our most successful surgery. It depends a lot on how you look at the outcomes. When you just look at patient satisfaction with flow, the success rates are very, very high greater than 90% in the literature and within our patients at the University of Utah. If you rigorously look at stricture recurrence as inability to pass a scope in our clinic through the strictured area, then our success is a little bit lower. Strictures really have to recur very tightly down to almost a pinhole before patients feel a lot of impingement on their urinary flow from the stricture. And that's the reason that the clinical success or the patient's perception of success is higher than our success when we measure it with a scope. When we use the buccal mucosa graft from the inner cheek, our success rate is less. I quote our, our typical success as about 75% at having a pure success where we can pass a scope through the area of stricture. Now the patients that recur, as I mentioned, many of them won't have symptoms. In other words, they feel like their urinary flow is fine. If patients uh, recur and have good flow, then typically we just watch them very closely to make sure that the stricture doesn't tighten down over time. If they do have some impingement in their urinary flow, then typically the first step that we take is an internal cutting procedure uh, where the stricture has recurred. Often thin strictures recur on either end of the graft that was placed within the urethra and these can respond to the internal cutting procedure where the original stricture does not respond. Recovery from urethroplasty or stricture surgery 
takes some time. Patients are usually in the hospital overnight and almost all patients feel fine the next day to leave the hospital. The incision is typically between the scrotum and the anus in an area that we call the perineum. This sounds like a very difficult area to have an incision, but actually there is not a tremendous amount of pain uh, in this area with an incision. Patients typically leave the hospital with some pain medicine and antibiotics. I ask patients usually to be off work while the catheter remains in place. Our typical practice at the University of Utah is to leave a catheter in place between two to four weeks. For simple stricture surgery where we cut out the scarred segment and reconnect the urethra, two weeks is adequate uh, in order to allow the urethra to heal. Usually about a week after surgery, patients start feeling much better and can resume normal activities like getting around the house, going for walks, those sorts of things. Often I ask patients, however, to be out of work until the catheter is removed, as having the catheter in place does cause some discomfort. If patients have a lot of problems with bladder spasms or overactivity, which is a feeling that they have to urinate despite the catheter being in place, then we can prescribe medicines to relax the bladder, which often help with this. When patients return to our clinic, we perform an x-ray called a voiding cystourethrogram or retrograde urethrogram. This is not as painful as the original x-rays that are performed to diagnose the stricture. The reason for this is that the catheter is already in place through the area of the surgery. We simply fill the bladder with contrast dye, gently remove the catheter, and have a patient void. The primary reason for this is to look for leakage where we sewed the urethra together. In other words, an area didn't heal quite right and there's a small leak out of the side of the urethra. This is very rare. We only see this in approximately two to three percent of cases and usually responds to additional catheter drainage. The Center for Reconstructive Urology and Men's Health was established approximately two years ago through the Department of Surgery at the University of Utah. We concentrate our efforts in urinary reconstruction for both men and women. We treat a variety of conditions including urethral strictures, urinary prosthetics including prosthetic surgery for erectile dysfunction in men, as well as urinary incontinence and urinary sphincters, especially after prostatic surgery or prostatectomy. We also treat damage from radiation therapy as well as post-surgical damage to the ureters after gynecologic surgery. We treat vaginal fistula. We also treat a large patient population with neurogenic bladder from complications of spinal cord injury multiple sclerosis, and a variety of other neurologic diseases.